too, y'all recall with the victim of Charlemagne the God. Man, what is this? <laughs> what is this, bro? Like, like I ain't gonna cap that. I off the muscle, bro. I'm thinking off like the crazy clips that he got, like the certain clips sent on the internet, bro. He be saying some out of pocket shit, bro. Like, and thank God I haven't seen them all, and I, I don't really watch um his show or podcast or whatever he does. But let's just go ahead and get to be welcome new people to subscribe to that. Is one of the biggest names in media today. And in an era of podcasts, he has impressively managed to do this over the radio. This is something that even people outside of hip hop have given him major props for. I've been a fan of yours for a while. You, I think you're the last great radio host and you will be the last famous radio host. However, for every person that's willing to give him his flowers for what he's accomplished in the media, there's just as many who wish they had never came onto his platform in the first place after they got absolutely embarrassed by him. My name is Luesta and these are the victims of Charlemagne the God. Out of the thousands of individuals who sat opposite to Charlemagne, DJ Envy, and Angela Yee during the glory days of The Breakfast Club, not many had gotten as personal questions leveled at him when he was just trying to be friendly as Logic. Not exactly known for his thick skin. Bro, I remember when this nigga, um, Charlemagne said to this nigga, I don't know, this is, I don't know if he be trying to get a clip, or is he just not, like, thinking... Oh, what? What this nigga? Logic's tolerance levels were pushed to their peak by Charlemagne when the host asked him a really personal question about his father. Your father was a crackhead, right? Ugh, he was. He's doing good now. He's, he's doing you know, good he's now. Right now. Or accused him of being homophobic over certain bars from the past. Now I saw you do an interview with Vlad TV and you said that uh, it, it would be very uncomfortable for you to listen to a gay rapper talking about kissing a dude. Did I say that? I don't know. You'd probably figure that's as bad as it could get. But as it turns out, that was just the tip of the iceberg, and he was about to get even more personal at one point. After watching that, people. Like, bro, like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, bro, like, come on, bro. Like, like, see, you see, you see, I understand why certain rappers, like, bro, what are you talking about? Like, some people, some people gonna crash out of that question. What do you mean, bro? Come on, come on, nobody wanna talk about that shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bro, come on, that's weird as hell. I couldn't help but feel sympathy for the no pressure rapper. The whole interview made me feel uncomfortable. Oh, God, he was trying so hard to make logic slip up and say something for clicks. So disrespectful with all the subtle shots. Asking out of line questions. Poor logic, he was so genuine through all of that bullshit. Bruh, I feel so bad for logic. Later down the line, logic would swear off of appearing on the show ever again. Even covering it on the track clickbait as he spit. I don't do the breakfast club with Charlemagne is shameless. That's the only one I leave out when I run my bases. Do your research before you call someone homophobic. You make any living off of controversy, and you know it. Clearly left scarred by the experience, Logic's premature retirement from the game saw him do interviews where he basically did a post-mortem on the reasons why he decided to call it quits. During that press run, he spoke about the effect that the Breakfast Club appearance had on him. When he basically kind of called me homophobic without even watching an interview, and I was like, I didn't even say that, and then for him to just out his mouth be like, yo, who your sister, That's like, yeah. so callous, like, that fucked me up. And, and, and I actually held on to that for like six years. And I was like, this isn't healthy. And I'm talking to my therapist about it. And I, I put I put it on record. Now that Logic is back from retirement, it's no surprise that he hasn't shown up to Power 105 for another interview in years. Ultimately, and, and y'all see like some, like some small, well, probably what Charlotte May thought was small can last with somebody for six years. But he said that lasted with him for six years. Right, that probably went out of Charlotte Man's mouth that one time and they think about it since then. Unless somebody brought it up and he's like, oh damn man, I was kinda of fucked. But that's lasted for the nigga for six years. Bro, that's why you gotta watch what you say and what you do to people, bro. Cause damn. Yeah, and that was the weirdest hit. Like what you why would you even ask and why you got the balls to ask somebody some shit like that? That's crazy as hell. Like, what the fuck? Logic was a huge success, and his career wasn't made or broken on The Breakfast Club. So, in that sense, what he said to Logic wasn't anything compared to the mental anguish he put on Lil Mama. Around the time she showed up to chat with the infamous trio, the lip gloss rapper was being clowned left, right, and center for her terrible, impulsive decision to join Alicia Keys and Jay-Z on stage without being invited. At that point, things were already pretty dark for her. But when she came up to be interviewed, Charlemagne cheerfully tried to end her career and destroy her self-esteem at the same time. You're an actual musician. You actually have, I guess, some kind type of talent. Like, you did have yeah, a little buzz going at one definitely point. definitely have talent. And but what have you done lately, though? This is a, a what have you done for me what type you, of industry. What have you done lately, Charlemagne? 
Charlemagne wasn't done, and he went on to criticize her even more. And if your face was the Bible, it would be the Old Testament. You play too much, I swear. <laughs> yeah, you gotta show and prove by actions and deeds, not words and lip service. You yeah. haven't put out no music in a long time. People know you for playing yourself, walking up on stage with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. Charlemagne, That's what they know you seriously. From. That's cut the this truth! Out. Cut this out. Could y'all please help me Can out? Can he cut this out? As opposed to ending his... Yeah, he dragging it, bro. Like, why you... Why? See, bro, Charlemagne, maybe... Was he gonna come up at this time? Or was, like, the um, Breakfast Club, like popping at this time because maybe he's just trying to like keep the shit like booming but this is crazy the salt there charlemagne just kept taking her to task in a way that was nothing short of brutal and eventually left her in tears chill out jurassic park tyrannosaurus rex prehistoric i put out an album while my mother was dying of cancer that right there alone is a struggle that's hard right that's tough for anybody but my music will speak for itself my actions will speak for itself. My mother will be proud. My father will be proud. At the end of the day, and nobody can stop me. Period. I think you got a real story to tell, and I think you should tell it. And, you know, stop focusing on the gimmicks. Because right now, you're like a character to yourself. Hated by Lil Mama ever since, she still holds a grudge to this day, and even tweeted this in 2022. Charlemagne is a bitch. He tried to trick a black, young, successful woman from the bottom out of my spot. He actually goes... Like, I mean, maybe he didn't know about the whole mom situation, but I think it like, success isn't, um, compared to, like, everybody. Like, if she considered herself successful, kudos to you. Like, I, I don't, under, like, you don't gotta be the latest popping thing. You don't gotta be popping 24-7 to, like, to still feel like you doing something. Like, oh. Goes on the list with killers, cops, feds, and other haters. Jealousy is a motherfucker, and it be your own people. In the Lil Mama situation, Charlemagne was in a position to take pot shots at someone who was arguably too nice for the rap game. And someone who can relate to that is Post Malone, who was treated horribly by Charlemagne for years. Entering the game to culture vulture allegations over tracks like White Iverson and Wearing Braids. I don't give a damn. That shit was a fucking banger. Charlemagne had had clearly made up his mind about posts by the time he came to the studio. As from the outset, he went out of his way to be unpleasant with him. Well, his album is out right now. It's Stony. called Stony. Did you listen to it? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I might though. What do you mean? Absolutely. <laughs> you might like it. You might like it. I might though. Somebody did recommend it. I'm lying. But I'm gonna listen to it. During the interview, Charlemagne even took digs at Post Malone's aroma. No, I don't dislike you, but I don't like the smell of beer and cigarettes. Post. And Post Malone smells like every beer and every cigarette that's in whatever convenience store in New York City right now. Considering he even brought his girl on and clowned on her too, it was one of the nastiest performances by Charlemagne ever. You know he's gonna sleep with other women though. You do know that. You're, are you aware of that? What? He's gonna sleep with other women. No, I'm not. This is what y'all should do, threesomes. That way you can basically see who he That's brings right. in. And you can make sure you manage the whole situation. It's like being a promoter. Yeah. And yeah. you keep him out of the trouble. Situation. You keep him out of trouble because yeah. you don't want him to end up catching no rape charge or getting no girl pregnant, catch a STD. So if you're picking the girls... <laughs> Be like, no, she's a good one. He's we can do this together. Have you ever thought about that? Two on one. Y'all leave her alone. But he didn't even stop there. Alongside calling him a fake future, Post's infamous comments that he doesn't listen to hip hop to feel something sent the radio personality off the deep end. He don't respect the culture. Like if he, had, if he if he had more respect for the culture and actually appreciated hip hop and talked like he appreciated hip hop, I would probably respect him more. But when he says shit like, when you want to feel something, don't listen to hip hop. Fuck out of here. We don't listen to your hip hop when we want to feel. Stupid ass. Despite Charlemagne's best efforts, it seems like the rest of the world is still pretty on board with Post. So some people think he should maybe let it go, as Post already has the W for getting such big reactions out of him. Post living rent free in Charlemagne's head. I think it's fine if Charlemagne doesn't like his music, but attacking someone's character and disrespecting them is some immature middle school shit. Although Post probably gets burnt on Charlemagne's disdain for white rappers, 
He at least held his own when confronted by him. Well, for MGK, Charlemagne basically just let him embarrass himself. Over the years, Charlemagne has been known to slander rappers as freestyle. At this point, spitting bars on the Breakfast Club is basically inadvisable because. Why would you do that? Why would you spit bars on the Breakfast Club? Not the last damn thing. If I was rapping, hell no. Nah. If I didn't see these clips, I'm burning. Hell no. Nah. The most I would do is try to piss Charlemagne off. If I'm on, if I'm going on a um. On an interview, and then Charlamagne trying to make me mad and start saying bullshit. I'm just gonna try to piss that nigga off. Like, why would I rap? There's no way. Because if he doesn't feel it, then he'll let you know. Just consider the infamous time where he did this to Safari. That's become nothing short of legendary. Front don't deal with a back in your pocket sort of diet, nigga. I'm calling you Atkins. Nah, that ain't it, yo. But when it comes to secondhand embarrassment from rappers as freestyles on the Breakfast Club, there's just nothing to equal MGK's attempt. When he first came onto the show, he seemed so eager to impress Charlemagne, and, well, he didn't really do a good job at it. Instead, it looked like he was about to burst into tears afterwards. I don't believe that you can tell me that this is not good. I'd rather stuff my pockets with these dollars till the Feddy make it burst like pinatas. Fun up, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't see, like, how you can, like, listen to that and not, like, be like, that's... That's hard. It doesn't move me, man. Like... Alright, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> move, let, him, let him listen to the album. Let him listen. What he act, what he act like Charlamagne is like his god. Like like Charlamagne like really inspired you to start rapping. Why he act like this nigga like Tupac or something? He's like, oh my god, Charlamagne don't fuck with my rap. Like it's Charlamagne, it's he's album. a nice guy. Nah, man, I'm not trying to hear that. You better than Yellow Wolf. Nah, I'm not trying to hear that. Since then, MGK has been back on the Breakfast Club without incident. But one megastar who actually appeared on the show long after Charlemagne had thrown a million jabs his way is Kanye West. Throughout his career, Ye has received Donkey of the Day numerous times over and over. So when they finally got him on the show, people were amazed that Ye even agreed to go on. But they wouldn't be disappointed with the outcome. Once he got in the studio, Charlemagne immediately provoked him when he called him Kanye Kardashian. After that, he gave Mr. West his uncut feelings about Kanye's latest album at the time. Do you not like the reception Jesus has gotten? Cause I that's yeah. I don't I didn't like that at all. And I was a Kanye West fan. Yeah. But Jesus it was, was, was. White. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Over time, their relationship had retained this weird love-hate dynamic. For example, back in 2018, Charlemagne had a long-form interview with him and then gave him donkey of the day for his slavery is a choice comments just weeks later. See, yeah, I like Kanye, but he be doing some bullshit shit. Like, like, what do you mean? Bro? Like, like, and then, see, man, like, it's like a, with Kanye, you gotta understand, this, this, this a middle, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta listen, but also don't listen, like, cause he be saying some out of pocket shit. Later. Since then, he he's claimed they squashed it all, and yeah, Ye even sent him some free Yeezys. But that hasn't stopped Charlemagne from still giving him donkey of the day whenever he feels it's necessary. Most notably, when Ye was going through the whole theatrical beef with Pete Davidson over Kim K. Nobody is better at conflating BS with real issues to make himself look like the victim than Kanye West. Kanye doesn't want his kids on TikTok. I understand that totally. Kanye West, this is Charlemagne talking, Brother Lenard. You have more negative influence on people than TikTok ever will. Mm. Does Kanye West think depicting the murder of his ex-wife's boyfriend in a music video, decapitating him and burying him, is a positive image? Is he okay? Kanye did that? That's not about right. I, I never seen the music video, but that's not about right. But damn, what? Kanye? Why? I wish I could say I'm surprised, but nigga, what the hell? Dude, his kids or any kids seeing those images. You think that video of you pretending to murder Pete wasn't all over TikTok? It's very hypocritical. Although Kanye has had it rough from Charlemagne over the years, it's never felt like there's any real animosity there. If anything, there's some love. But the same can't be said when it comes to another megastar who has Charlemagne on his back from the jump. And that famous individual is Drake. At the time when Drizzy was regularly getting destroyed online for being too soft at the outset of his career, Charlemagne was one of the people who was leading that charge. Show and prove back. This nigga do call himself an average jerk hater. I forgot he did. Actions and deeds. Stop being a freaking sensitive ass girl. And I don't even want to say girl, because I know some girls that ain't that sensitive. Just stop being a sensitive person, period. I don't even want to insult girls like that. Because I always say it's three sexual orientations out here. It's gay, straight, and Drake. Gay, and straight, Drake straight. is just a whole different type of breed. It don't got nothing to do with That's nothing gay. other than he's just a different type of breed, man. Stop being so sensitive, dog. As the shots kept coming, this got... People who, like, really, like, like... 
fan over Drake. Like, like it's not it's not like I'm talking about people who really love Drake. Y'all be like crazy. I shout out to Aiden Ross, but when that nigga called that nigga um Drake, or, and he's like, bro, bro, I saw the video, bro. Yo, me, bro. Oh my god, it's so big, like. What? Out of response from the uncharacteristically what? angry Drizzy. Really Turn on like Power 105 and hear some nerd telling them that I'm I'm gay or they have pictures of me or that to me is like why man like for what you know why are you using your job to exactly carry me down? like you're a real fucking loser you know. Sorry. In retrospect, people think that maybe Drake actually took Charlemagne's advice in a way, which served as somewhat as an unintentional favor, as Drake would be toughened up from his criticism. At certain points, the two have been cordial, and after he dropped a lyric about him on Back to Back, Drake actually sent him bottles during the Meek Mill feud. This guy Drake's really living his raps, man. He said somebody was gonna make him buy bottles for Charlemagne. He bought six bottles of Don Perignon with a card. I said, let's be friends, Aubrey Graham. But since then, Drake, they have been up and down. Charlemagne says a comment here, then Drake responds with a bar or two. Most recently, Drake fired back at him after Charlemagne basically said that Slime You Out with SZA came and went without anyone caring. This time, it prompted a bigger response from Drizzy on Instagram, where he wrote, You kind of weirding me out, G. Like you're really obsessed with me or something for years. Like you look in the mirror and you wish you saw my reflection type shit. Whatever you gotta do to let it out, I'm sure your 435 loyal fans will stand by you. You fucking goof. As for what the problem is, Charlemagne told Andy Cohen that he thinks this will just be the way it is forever. What went wrong? I really don't know. I think me and Drake will always have a love hate relationship. I, I, I'll never, even though he's great, I'll never really have anything too good to say about him. Over the years, Drizzy has received plenty of reasons to have issues with Charlotte. So many, in fact, that he probably hasn't. Yeah, even though he's great, y'all really never have nothing good to say about him. Like, this nigga just really bitch. Like, I really don't fuck with that nigga. But like, you know, it's love and hate type shit. Like, you know, if I see him do something like, that I fuck with, I might, I might give the nigga the thumbs up. <laughs> like, okay. Even considered how weird he was to one of the Six Gods' ex-girlfriends, Jennifer Lopez. Over the years, Charlemagne has had a bizarre relationship with women. For one, he's been accused of unsavory things and even gave himself Donkey of the Day once for telling the world that he basically took advantage of his wife the first time they met. to your wife the first time and like and you thought the proper response was to give yourself a donkey of the day my nigga sir 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 you did what but when it comes to him being creepy on The Breakfast Club, no one had to deal with anything worse than Jennifer Lopez. During her appearances on the show, she's had to deal with some unwanted advances from Sharla, as well as some following through on a very bizarre promise. You know, I, actually, I sniffed your chair last time you were here. You're a sick person. I know. <laughs> I did. I couldn't help it. You're, I mean, you're J-Lo. J-Lo just left. Mmm. It's incidents like this that make people wonder if there's something a little off about him. I un He thinks so? <laughs> Hell, you would have something wrong with that nigga, man. That nigga fucked up. <laughs> that nigga gone, bro. That nigga's not there, bro. There's no way. Man, how the hell does a woman get up? And your, and your first thing, you know, your first reaction in your mind, the first thought that hits your mind, oh, j -Lo just left. Let me step for chair. And you think that nigga's good? You think he's good up here? Hell no. Ironically, think Charlemagne is on the spectrum. My boy has no filter. Charlemagne is that guy you don't want to bring to a family function. But while behaving bizarrely around women is one thing, what caused a bigger stir is when some people believe that he betrayed his co-host Angela Yee by refusing to stand up for her. After working together for years, the pair always seemed to have a friendly relationship that would make you think that if someone came for Yee, he'd have her back. But when Gucci Mane rolled through with some mad accusations that Angela had tried to get with him back in the day, that theory was put to rest. Yeah, he smashed Angela Yee, girl. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that's not. <laughs> she didn't try. She was on my dick back then. Oh, okay. That is a lie. Oh, that is a lie. No, it was cool. I was not on your dick. Stop you it. You used to be texting me what hotel you was in. Oh, 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 o
me confused with somebody else. Shortly after the interview was posted, media outlets began blowing it up out of proportion, and the clips of course went viral. As if not having her back at the time wouldn't have been enough, Charlemagne then had a face-to-face -face with Guwop and let both of his co-hosts get majorly disrespected in front of him. And DJ Envy, he's a pussy too. Envy did it too? Envy's pussy, man. Pussy. So I'm confronting him about what him and Angela did, and if he come at me wrong, I'm gonna slap the shit out of him. Don't never try me like that, man. Because you was flirting with me. I rejected you. I don't want you. What you mad about? This shit wasn't even no big deal. I would never say nothing else about it. I never brought it up. In the aftermath of that interview, Angela unfollowed him on IG, insinuating that she clearly wanted him to stand his ground, even if it meant taking a whooping. After I mean, like, if I be with you every day, and like, like, you my co-host, yeah, I expect you to put him. I expect you to go put back for me, especially if a nigga is disrespecting me, like, in your face. In other words, Angela made it clear that she didn't really have love for Charlemagne whatsoever during an interview with Variety. We've always been the same. We work together. It is what it is. Like he said, we're co-workers. A lot of people have jobs where they don't necessarily love the people they work with. It's just a part of life. That's not the person you'd hang out with in real life. In 2022, Angela Yee would leave the show and it always felt like there were things left unsaid. Now, Charlemagne has since apologized for not having her back, even if he didn't necessarily feel like it was on him. Like, I just don't think that as a personality I should be held responsible for that but then the nuance of it is me and Angela E have worked together for almost 10 years you know and, and if me and Angela E weren't necessarily on the, the best of terms I could see why she would feel like I'm, I'm not her friend I mean that's I, I literally just apologized to Angela E for that like literally I'm talking about like yesterday. Although the Angela Yee incident would drive a wedge between them, there are other times where Charlemagne's victims are simply the recipients of his razor sharp wit rather than anything malicious. And in the case of Kevin Hart, that's exactly what went down. As in this occasion, Charlemagne was funny enough to even best a comedian at their own game. Back in 2017, Kevin Hart was on his redemption tour after it was discovered that he cheated on his wife. So every press interview he did was about him trying to claim that he was a changed man, and for the most part, journalists were content to go along with his message. But when it came to his attempt on The Breakfast Club, it was quickly derailed by See the God with a single comment. Wait, man. Go ahead. Speaking of jumping on that, yes, what sir. was you thinking earlier this year when you got caught cheating in Vegas? Hey, brother. Mr. Listen, irresponsible. It's, a, it, it's beyond irresponsible. Okay. Hilariously, it only got worse from here. And although Kevin Hart kept trying to give as much praise to his partner as possible for taking him back, Charlamagne... Don't go cap. If I got cheated on... And my girl going around doing interviews about it, talking about how she a better woman. Bro, women, bro, we got to be honest. Women be going through some crazy tough shit because they know it. They know it. Just stay no at it. You're my rib. That's my wife. You're up here. Well, what's your favorite side to have with your ribs? Shut up, man. Shut up, man. That's a great joke, Charlie. You know I know some shit about you. <laughs> well, that was all in good fun. The same can't be said for everyone who was the butt of a joke for Charlie. And sometimes even his friends aren't safe. Just look at what happened to Tyrese Gibson. Over the years, the actor, singer, and rapper has had a contentious relationship with the Power 105 show. He even got sued by a director for running his mouth off about the project in the studio. Over time, Charlemagne, Envy, and Tyrese got close. They even texted each other regularly. But when Tyrese fell on hard times, Charlemagne wasn't exactly there to lift him up. In fact, he piled on. I've been sparing Tyrese only because even though I feel like he's full of feces, I wasn't sure what it was he was going through, okay? When he was crying online about his daughter, I had no problem with that. I'm a father, he's a father. Kids need both their parents, period. Okay, when he was online crying about The Rock doing the spinoff to The Fast and Furious, I thought that was extremely lame. But I told him that via a group chat. Yes, Tyrese, DJ, Envy, and I had a group chat that I no longer <laughs> participate in, okay? Because I'm allergic to lameness. Wow. Tyrese Gibson, I ain't even here to make jokes with you. All right, you need to learn. To get out your own way. You the type to stand in your own shadow and wonder why it's dark. All right? Tyrese, you are the prime example of talk much and they think you're a fool. Be silent and they become curious. Try being silent. And maybe people will start becoming curious about something other than your mental meltdowns, right? Yeah. We're not going to be curious about no movies. We won't be curious about no music because you keep talking too much, reminding us that you are indeed a devil damn fool. Please give Tyrese Gibson the biggest hee-haw, please. Hee-haw, hee-haw. 
you stupid motherfucker. Are you dumb? To say that fans were shocked at how hard he went at him would be an understatement. Yeah. Tyrese, so you're just gonna kick me when I'm down? Charlemagne, where are my Tims at? This dude was working on Donkey of the Day like a science project. While they were once buddies, their relationship between them had majorly disintegrated. And as Tyrese continued to go through it, he spoke openly about how much Charlemagne hurt him. You're this voice, you've got books, you're this champion, outspoken man that represents all things mental health and yet i've lost count of the amount of time that he's contributed to the stresses in and around my mental health from being insensitive or just deciding to talk about a man that he actually knows now in this case all's well that ends well as tyrese has since gone on the show and made up with charlemagne and envy but for some people the countless mistakes um because usually most of these seem like they come from a place of insensitive um being insensitive and just not necessarily thinking about what he's saying like he's just speaking before he thinks and maybe he is thinking and he's trying to get like reaction out of these people but yeah these yeah the verbal beatings they took from Charlemagne will last a lifetime, and for that reason, he's going to go down in history as one of the most controversial men to ever appear on the airwaves. Facts. Um, yeah, hopefully- What the fuck? This shit scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> this shit scared the hell out of me, boy. What the fuck? Um, what was I even finna- I don't even know what I was gonna say. This nigga scared the shit out of me. Um, uh, <laughs> I love y'all. Stay safe. I'll see y'all next video. We out. <laughs> uh.